Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, June 26th, 2020. I don't know why it slurred on the Friday, but um, today we're going to be talking about the 2016 election data and discussing whether or not it was truly wrong and discussing why, in my personal belief, I would not consider the 2016 data fundamentally flawed um, in the sense that it was accurate in most cases. And yes, of course, there will be some states that will be different. In 2012, it was Florida that was expected to go to Mitt Romney that ended up going for Barack Obama. And then in 2016, it was the three Rust Belt states, but most notably the state of Wisconsin. And this was actually given to me by a viewer named Joshua Steed. He gave me the uh, overall spreadsheet that you are now going to see on your screen that gives me um, pretty much an analysis, not necessarily an analysis, but the data comparing the 2016 polling data versus the 2016 actual results, and then discussing the swing, comparing it to the 2020 polling data, and then giving us what he calls a correct average. Essentially, he will be giving us the states that um, are toss-ups in 2020, compared Compare how wrong they were in 2016, apply it to the 2020 polling data, essentially swinging a number of states either in favor of Donald Trump or the Democrats based off how correct or incorrect they were, and then correcting the current polling average based off of that alone. If you take a look on your screen, it may seem a little confusing based off the colors, but if you look at the charts themselves, it's actually pretty easy to understand. So we'll take Arizona, for example. In 2016, it was 4% in favor of President Trump. It is now 4% in favor of Joe Biden in that third column, the 2020 average. And then the 2016 natural uh, was 3.5% uh, for Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton, meaning the 2016 swing was actually in favor of the Democrats by 0.5%, meaning the correct average based off the polling data we have right now is 4 plus 0.5%. Which is 4.5% in favor of Joe Biden. We also have it comparing it to the June 16th polling data around a week and a half ago. That gives us the, where the uh, election was standing around four years ago from today, and then adjust the current polling data based off of that alone. And we will actually be doing an electoral map based off the 2016 swing and then correcting it to the 2020 average. So essentially, if the polls were as incorrect as they were in 2016, how would the map look? And spoiler alert, Joe Biden wins regardless. So taking a look at this data, again, this is why I say that the 2016 polls were not necessarily incorrect. You can see, um, you know, a lot matching up based off the 2016 polling data. A lot of the red in the second column matches with the red in the fourth column. The only states that were wrong are Michigan right here. You can go ahead and see Nevada was incorrect, uh, the state of Pennsylvania and the state of Wisconsin. Other than that, nothing else was incorrect. And the reason why I point out Nevada a lot is because you have to note that with Nevada was actually expected to go to President Trump and ended up going for Hillary Clinton. So if anything, the polls weren't wrong uh, just for Donald Trump, but also for Secretary Clinton. And then you take a look at Michigan. 3.4% in favor of her ended up going to Trump by 0.3% within the margin of error. Pennsylvania, 1.9% lead for Hillary Clinton. Trump ended up winning it by 0.7%, well within the margin of error. The only state that was fundamentally wrong was the state of Wisconsin. Hillary Clinton had a 6.5% lead in this state. Donald Trump won by 0.7%, an overall net swing of 7.2%, meaning that Wisconsin was the only one out of the three or four states that was outside the margin of error in terms of where it swung um, towards Donald Trump so uh, or towards Hillary Clinton. So when you take a look at that alone, the data wasn't actually incorrect. It accurately predicted Florida, Arizona, Georgia, Iowa, Minnesota, uh, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, Virginia. Um, so it was right. The general election was right as well. An overall a net swing of 1.1% in favor of Donald Trump nationwide. So not that much, realistically. And when you take a look at the polls versus the actual results, you know, the average error was 1.3% in favor of Donald Trump, really only a 1% swing nationwide across all of the states that are on your screen right now, Arizona to Wisconsin. And when you think about that, that, that just makes it very difficult to go ahead and say the 2016 polls were flawed. Um, yes, they may have gotten it wrong in some states, and a lot of the polling firms have reassessed the way that they do their data, who they're asking in the key battleground states. But really, they haven't been too far off. The only thing that was wrong was the way that the media covered the election. The entire election, they were discussing how Hillary Clinton was winning big, how she was going to win. And a lot of the times, they didn't want to get it wrong. So they just overall either characterized every state as a toss up or gave Hillary Clinton the election um, and at sometimes, you know, a landslide MSNBC with Steve Kornacki on the screen uh, considered the state of Texas possibly being a toss up at one point in time. Obviously, that didn't end up happening. He won the state of Texas by 9%. But at the time period, you know, some people did think Texas could be a toss up. And I think that was just more so of the media's narrative rather than what the polling data truly indicated. Because if you take a look on Election Day, Hillary Clinton was only expected to win the election by six electoral votes. 
a six electoral vote margin, 272 to 266 based off the polling data. So we knew this race was going to get close. It narrowed up absolutely on election day, which means that Hillary Clinton very well could have lost. I get it. You always see that Huffington Post thing that says Hillary Clinton has a 98% chance of winning, but that's not what the polls said. That's not what the polls indicated. That's not what any of the polling firms agreed with. That was just one wrong uh, you know, media characterization of the race, and people just run with it because they don't want to face the reality. The polls were not incorrect in 2016, and the polls probably won't be incorrect in 2020. They weren't too far off in 2018 either. So if they even resemble, um, or even if they are as wrong as they were, four years ago, Biden still wins. And I think that's the main reason why the GOP, uh, you know, intentionally deflects, not GOP, I wouldn't say the GOP, President Trump deflects away from polling data, you know, calling out CNN and saying, this poll is wrong. Is it though? I mean, is it fundamentally wrong? If you take a look at the, sure, CNN's coverage may not necessarily be too partial to President Trump, but I will say that their polling data does prove to be mildly accurate. The New York Times Siena poll that shows Biden leading in every swing state that's rated A plus in terms of their actual ability to predict elections. I mean, fundamentally, these polls weren't wrong in 2016 and they probably won't be in 2020. Let's adjust the correct average and take a look at the states and how solid they actually become. Uh, but we'll do that after we discuss the June 16th average polling data. So based off the 2016 data, four years ago from a week and a half ago, pretty much Arizona was correct, Colorado, Florida, Georgia. Now, Iowa was drastically incorrect. That was because the polling data was too far off. So I will say that it may not be always the best indicator, um, you know, in June. But I will say that based off the 2016 numbers um, on Election Day, we could be very trusting in the polls that we actually have. And actually, uh, realistically, some of these weren't even too far off. The only state that only states that were wrong, per se, uh, was Michigan. And Wisconsin and Florida, not Florida, sorry, uh, Iowa. Other than that, every state was correct. Texas isn't on here because there was no polling data between June and July. Again, no, most people didn't consider it a toss-up until the media was in a frenzy around uh, early October saying Donald Trump made Texas a toss-up. Um, he did for 2020, but not so much for 2016. So when you take a look at these uh, overall numbers, you know, based off of, uh, you know, Pennsylvania was accurately predicted um, in June uh, of 2016. So if it was correct in June 2016, if Hillary Clinton was behind Donald Trump in Pennsylvania, if she was behind in Ohio and behind in North Carolina and behind in Georgia and behind in Florida uh, and behind in Arizona and ended up losing those states, what's not to say the same thing won't happen to Donald Trump? If the polls were as wrong as they were four years ago, Biden still wins period, end of story. If you take a look at the correct average, now we're going to go through it because this is irrelevant. Um, yes, it does give us a better scope at what happened two, uh, four years ago, but if you take a look at the actual data, we should adjust our electoral map based off these correct averages. And I tell you now, it doesn't get pretty for Donald Trump. Uh, you know, Joe Biden takes a lead in Arizona, 4.5%, a state that Donald Trump carried by 3.5%, an overall swing, you know, of 8% in the state. In the state of Colorado, huge increase for the Democratic Party, now enough to be likely a 12-point uh, lead for Joe Biden. Go over to Florida, 5.8% lead in the state. Even though he may lose based off of the uh, overall margins, that's enough to characterize Florida as a likely state. Okay, Georgia, Joe Biden doesn't win it, but he still loses it by a smaller but narrowly smaller margin than what he lost it by or than what Hillary Clinton lost it by in 2016. Iowa still narrows up a little bit, still enough to be likely for Donald Trump. You take a look at Maine. This one goes to Joe Biden by 8.4%. You have to adjust for the fact that, again, they were wrong in 2016. Uh, right now, 8.4% margin for uh, Joe Biden, enough to characterize it as likely. We move down the list. Michigan, 4.9% margin for uh, Joe Biden. Again, adjusting it for how wrong it was just four years ago. Not how wrong it was because it makes it sound like it was super wrong, um, how subtly wrong it was uh, four years ago. Minnesota, 11.5% margin, enough to move it 10% from where it was, literally 10% from where it was four years ago. Uh, Hillary Clinton won it by 1.5%. Donald Trump um uh, Donald Trump loses it by 11.5%. So just add 10 to that Minnesota number. Santa Nevada, 7.2% uh, margin for the Democratic Party. Keep in mind, they always, always, whether it's a Senate race or a governor's race or a, a House race or a presidential race, always overestimate Republicans in Nevada. That's one thing the pollsters typically don't do right in that state. Uh, in the state of New Hampshire, that state goes to uh, Joe Biden by a lean characterization, 4%. In the state of New Mexico, 14.3% margin for Joe Biden, almost enough to characterize it as safe. Not a good look for President Trump for a state that was a toss-up, you know, just eight years ago. In the state of North Carolina, Donald Trump narrowly carries it. It's a 0.3% margin over uh, Joe Biden, which means, again, 
this date, well, could be within recount measures, which means uh, it'll probably still go to Donald Trump, but still insanely close. Ohio narrows up to a 4.6% margin for Donald Trump, and that's with, you know, a 4.6 swing. So if these polls are mildly accurate, you know, Joe Biden could still be uh, the running in the running in the state of Ohio. For Pennsylvania, Biden still carries it. 3.7% margin. Now the race is maybe narrower than what I would characterize it on the current electoral map, but that's assuming that they make the same exact mistakes they did in 2016, and that's not likely whatsoever. In fact, it's enough to characterize the state of Texas in favor of Joe Biden by a lean margin, a 1% margin over Donald Trump. In Virginia, it's an 11.4% margin, which is a very large margin, to say the least. I mean, that is a state that was a toss-up, that was a Republican stronghold through the 2000s. The state of Wisconsin, this one narrowly goes to uh, Joe Biden, 0.8%, the only tilt state in favor of Joe Biden, which means that if the polls were as wrong as they were in 2016, Biden still wins the election. Think about that. If you take the data, yes, we're seeing a repeat of 2016. If you're a Trump supporter, you better hope not because you still lose. Donald Trump better hope there isn't a repeat and the polls aren't as wrong as they were in 2016 because if they are, Biden still wins. The polls, sure, may have incorrectly predicted the presidential election winner in three states, four states. No, three states, presidential election winner, I said. Um, for the general election popular vote, almost spot on. So yes, the mainstream media may have painted the narrative that Hillary Clinton was the solid, no one could beat her candidate. And they were right up through the primary. And I will say in almost certainty, I don't think that any other Republican now would have beaten uh, Hillary Clinton back then. I don't think any of those Republicans realistically um, could have beaten her. I know in the past I have thought about it and I did have a different viewpoint on it. But as I take a closer look at the 2016 election, Donald Trump was a one of a time, uh, one of a type candidate. And I think that he's bringing that same type of energy back to 2020. This time the American people, you know, aren't supporting him as much as they used to. So yes, you may think that polls were wrong and that's, you know, up to you. But the data doesn't really agree with you. They were wrong in three states in terms of accurately predicting the winner of the presidential election. And I would say that's pretty strong. You know, yes, they were really actually only wrong in one state. They accounted for the margin of error in Michigan. They accounted for the margin of error in Pennsylvania. Wisconsin was the only one that was really wrong. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that there was very little polling data once we got through the election. They really only polled right before those final two weeks of the campaign when Donald Trump completely turned off all efforts away from Florida and North Carolina and Georgia up to the Rust Belt. Because they saw it was narrowing up and Donald Trump har uh, jumped on it. And it was very successful. His campaign was very successful at turning the state around. So um, this is for you all to, you know, understand yourselves, compare it to where it was four years ago, compare it to where it was uh, four years ago in, you know, three months. OK, but really all you can take away from it is that the polls only swung uh, based off the actual versus the polling results by one point three percent. And I'd say with Joe Biden at a 10 point lead nationwide, he's very comfortable with knowing that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already. Please check out the Instagram at Let's Talk Elect and the Twitter at LT Elections. I post there pretty often. You can go ahead and check out the new, uh, new video on your screen and a playlist to the 2020 election nights. Again, thank you all for watching this video. Please consider joining as a member on this channel, and I will see you all tomorrow.